Okay. My microphone and speaker work now. Awesome. And we are recording just so you guys know. Great. Okay, so uh, Julia is not able to join the meeting and she asked me to chair this session. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and call the meeting to order at 7.08. And the first item is to elevate alternates, which I believe we will need to do. I know there's still a fuzzy line. <laughs> well, I say better safe than sorry. We might as well Let's do go. it and move on. Let's go ahead and do it. So All we'll, right. um, I'd like to make a motion to elevate Diane. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Great. Thank you. So I made, Abigail made the motion. It was seconded by Michael and all were in favor. So I'd like to make a motion to move to executive session to discuss Camp, Cal Cal Camp Kent Counselor candidates. Um, hold on one second, Abigail. You got it. Did we make them uh, accept the agenda? Oh, I skipped right over that. Okay, because I know John, did you want to you wanted to review the uh, uh, up to date budget, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so we should add that in there. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, so I will, uh, John. If there's a request of when you would like to, I'll just add it to the end of the agenda. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'd like to add review of budget to date up to budget to you go ahead john make the motion <laughs> i'd like to make a motion that we um add in uh, the budget review um after item 11 which will become item 12 and then 12 will become uh, item 13. second all those in favor aye 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 Okay, so John made the motion, Michael seconded, all were in favor. Okay, so anything else about the agenda? Anybody, no. any other updates? No. Great. So now I'd like to, as per the agenda, move us into an executive session to discuss camp counselor candidates. So I'll make a motion to move into executive session. Second. All those, in, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so motion made by Abigail, seconded by Kate, all, the, all those were in favor. All right, so Jared, would you please? All right, so we just came out of executive session where we discussed candidates for the camp uh, Camp Kent uh, counselors, and I would like to request of the commission that Tom Ford, who is currently on our staff as the ASP director, that he be moved from his position as ASP director to um, a position as camp counselor at a rate of $17 an hour. I'd like to request that we transition ASP assistants Skylar Fitch and Lizzie Besmer from their position as ASP assistants to camp counselors as well um, at a rate of 15 an hour. And I would like to request that we hire Shannon Raver, uh, an applicant for camp counselor. Um, and given her experience, I would like to hire her at a rate of 16 an hour. So the different pay rates being uh, indicative of experience um, and uh, roles that they will take on as well. Um, and I would like to request that they be hired per diem and their hours to be determined by the camp director, Chris Heller, and myself. I should have said I'd like to make a motion before all that. So, so there's a motion. So we'll make a motion to 
do everything uh, Jared just said. Rehire Tom, Skyler, and Lizzie. Extend an offer to Shannon. Compensate Tom at a $17 an hour. Skyler and Lizzie, $15 an hour. Shannon, $16 an hour. All of the employment agreements will be per diem. Amen. Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Okay, so I guess it goes forward. Great. Uh, next item on the agenda is a concert series updates. Mike, I turn that to you. Thank you. I um, so there is a flyer and there are dates. The first, they're Thursdays, as you probably know. Uh, let me bring up the the flyer so I can get the first date going. Uh, Sorry, bear with me one second. Okay, so the first concert is July 14th. And then we have um, on the 21st, the 28th, August 4th and August 11th. So those are from 6 to 7.30 at the Land Trust Field parking opening at 5.30. So in the past, they've had the volunteers uh, show up at five o'clock. Um, and I guess it's kind of the more the merrier type thing, but it, it's, I think, great if we can count on at least two people from the commission being there. Um, I'll plan on being there at each one. Um, so I don't, I don't have much more to add at this time, but uh, that's what I know. Mike, um, yep. two things. One, can you send me the most up-to-date flyer? Yes. I will, I'll get it out. Well, I've, I previously posted the older one to Facebook. Um, and, uh, but I will get an email out and get it up on the website, but, um, what day of the week are these Thursday evenings, Thursday evenings. Okay. Well, I will most likely be in attendance. Um, oh, cool. At most, if not all of them, um, you know, um, I might be on vacation one week. I don't even know yet. So yeah, but yeah, no, no, I'll definitely be there for sure. And, um, do we get volunteers? Do they get volunteers team effort? Cause um, I'm sure I can get plenty, but I don't want to step on their toes. So the Lions toes. Club usually chips in and helps out. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll be, you know, kind of rotating cast from the Lions Club and then usually the same, the same people from the land trusts are there, um, you know, four, four or five people. Okay. So I just got your message. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, no problem. All right, cool. Excellent. Awesome. Well, it sounds like it's going to be great. And Mike, I just have to say thank you again for taking the reins on this. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. And I'll, I'll reach out to, to Connie to, to see if I'm forgetting anything. Um, but we do have a few more weeks until the first one. So yeah, I think we're in a good spot. I saw they had a porta potty out there. Is that going to be there for the summer? I will ask. Okay. You, uh, yes, it will be there. Oh, well, okay. Thanks, great. Thanks, um, thank you for this flyer, Mike. All right. I guess we're good on this one, right? Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And um, perhaps if it's at all uh, easy to do, sending a reminder out the week of as if people are available to volunteer, they might be able to be there last minute. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good idea. Awesome. 
just one second. Okay, so Parks and Rec Commission alternate commissioner discussion. So we've had four inquiries for letters of interest. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know what was going on. I could not open that zip file. I tried like 20 different times. So what you got was an email with a bunch of things, um, but it is in there so you guys can read that. Um, but that was, uh, Julia and I were not having technology uh, was not working, but I think this works, so. Yeah, this yeah. works. I, it is, I don't know if Biz is letters in here. Oh, look at that. Good morning. Please see my attached letter. Yeah. But, okay. Let me, I can, uh, I can uh, um, letter I can definitely put in there. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it into the folder right now while you guys are talking. It, I think it's in there. No, it's not. It, Just this email from Julia is. Oh, okay. The actual, okay. Yeah. I was yeah. having issues with this. She sent them in a zip file, but I don't know. She, it looked like she had a Mac and I don't, and you know, you know how that goes. All right, I'll find it while you guys chat. So we have four, Mary Ellen Epstein, Biz Bernard, Brian Hastings, and John Hoving. That's really amazing that we have four people interested in being the alternate Yeah, I agree. Um, I know in other towns, because I speak often with other rec professionals, especially back home in New York, um, they do not have that kind of interest in the commission period, let alone in an alternate position. So that says something. That says people really wanna be involved in this and making things Making park and rec, should I say it? Great again. Now I'm just rambling, I'm sorry. Anyway, continue. All right, the letter's in there. What action do you want us to take? Nope. I'm sorry, I just have uh, kids at my shoulders. So would we like to discuss these candidates? Do we have criteria that we're looking for in terms of what we're seeking in a candidate? Any thoughts? Well, I would take Brian Hastings because he was uh, on a, a member a long time ago. So um, he knows the ins and outs, so it'd be easy. I can also see the appeal of getting somebody new to town in. But yeah. I, um, I see the appeal also of having somebody working within KCS with children. Just so you guys and know. We've got great candidates. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I, um, I don't think it's really like necessarily appropriate for me to be a part of the discussion. So I'm not going to really speak. So just so you guys know, not like blowing this off. I just feel like that's a commission thing. Um, so. Toodles. I would say just as somebody that has been in a lot of programs and hangs out after school, um, all of the, and, and involved with other things in town, I've gotten to know Biz, Mary Ellen, and Brian all pretty well. And I think they'd all be really wonderful to work with. They bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm for this community. Um, so it's great to see them, all three of them. And they've all sought me out in one way or another to express interest in 
wanting to get involved with Park and Rec. Jared, is, is Biz's letter in? Yeah. Great. So just want to give everybody a moment to read everything. Rufus, you're, you're muted. Michael, I'm having trouble getting that. Uh, you sent you know, that picture to me as a text message. Um, can you possibly email it to me? I will email it to you right now. All right, thanks. I'm trying to upload it to the website as we're doing this. So the, these four little letters, that's all, all we have, right? We have the, the long email and then the, the second file from Biz that's a, a letter. And yeah, that's all we have. We don't have resumes. You know, just for argument's sake, is we're going to obviously choose one of these people, but the other ones, if they're really that interested in being involved with Park and Rec, is there anything stopping them from coming to meetings and can they participate in the meeting by raising their hand and asking a question during the meeting? 100%. So it's almost like they can practically be an alternate. They just can't vote. Yeah, and an alternate can't vote unless the alternate's elevated anyways. So right, right. we would love, and I've, you know, some of them have joined other meetings, like um, the meeting we had about getting a pool. You know, they've been active. Some of them, not all of them, but yeah, it would be awesome if they all joined our meetings and yeah, I mean, spoke up. They can, they are, it's great. We welcome the public to come on and if they can come on and give their opinion on anything, you know, we're discussing, it's practically the same thing. They just can't vote unless they're an alternate and they're elevated. we have to only choose, we can only choose one, correct? At this so. time, we only have, only, well, we haven't changed anything about the bylaws. Yeah. So, so it's yeah, just two are, alternates, right? Yeah. Just two alternates right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And technically in the bylaws, Jared is able to vote. Right. Well, I don't see how I can, I mean, based solely on what I'm reading, I mean, I, you know, how to make a really informed choice. It seems I would defer to people who who know who know these guys better than me. Um, they all look great. I don't know how. how uh, I'd love, like you all just said, I would love for them to all feel welcome and become involved as much as they possibly can. Um, I don't really know. I don't. Do you need to choose one right away? I mean, can you invite them to meetings and, you know, maybe see who? Yeah. Just add the most. I mean, I. It's I I feel the same. Yeah, way. Maybe, it's, it's tough to. Maybe we should formulate a question for all four of them to answer in their own way. Um, you know, something along the lines of, um, you know, how, how do you see the park and rec program in, in Kent evolving in the near future? And how would you work to try to get that to happen? Uh, just, you know, and so they're all given the same thing. I mean, they're all different. I, I, 
you know, John's already said that uh, Brian's was it Brian who's been on before. Yep. Um, Biz has been, you know, grew up in Kent. Is at center school. She knows kit the kids probably really well. That might be a good connection, but who knows? You know. And 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 was employed at the after school program and camp camp Kent. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that sounds like a good idea. And perhaps we should invite them to come and introduce themselves, join join a meeting. I think that's the big thing is being present and being able to be present. You know, suddenly you're on Zoom and you're on video, it might change there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you Feelings. could say we're gonna make a decision next month, you know, in a month or two, like, I don't know how fast you wanna do it and then see who brings the most to the meeting maybe. Has some good ideas. So Rufus, uh, you would have we'd have to pick somebody, then present it to the board of selectmen. Is that correct? Um, I don't, I don't know whether the board of selectmen okay it or not, but I don't think we have to be involved in. You know, I think I think you guys can choose the alternate, and then we just okay it. I would think, I, you know. Yeah, that it seems like. Um, it says here in the bylaws, the membership of said commission shall be appointed by the board of selectmen within 30 days of annual town meeting. Any vacancy that may occur on said commission may be filled by the commission before the next annual town meeting. The commission shall choose from its membership such officers it deems necessary. You know, and it, there's more stuff there, but I think that, so we have, we can fill it how we want. And then, right. you know, the, the board makes it, you know, stamps their approval on it at the town meeting. So. And in the bylaws, there's two alternates. So, you know, you could, you could like send something back to all of them. So we've, you know, we're, we're overjoyed to have multiple really good candidates. Um, so we're going to pose this one question to you and, 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 would like your response. And then if you can come to our next meeting, introduce yourselves for those on the commission who might not know you. Um, we'll use that to um, choose the alternate, but please feel welcome to participate at any meeting you want, you know, if you're interested. Um, I'm surprised. I'm I'm pleased, but I'm you know to have four. Right? That shows there's a lot of interest in in expand you know growing our park and rec program again. Yeah, and you know based on how they respond to the question and what their interests are, maybe we'll be able to at some point have subcommittees where we've got people focused on programs and people focused on parks and can invite them to work with us right those who don't become an alternate okay so the next steps are to go back to that well the proposed next steps is to go back to them with a question or a prompt working prompt how do you see the park and rec program in kent evolving in the near future and how would you like to be involved ask them to share their answer and join our next meeting to introduce themselves. And I guess share their answer at the next meeting when they introduce themselves. Maybe say in terms of in terms of the parks and the programs, just so they have that it's not, you know, people have to remember that it's there's that sort of dual 
Right. So I can see people having a lot of interest in discussions about the facilities of our parks mm -hmm. and also having ideas about programs, you know, or and or. So how do you see the park and rec programs and facilities in Kent? Yeah, yeah. Evol evolving in the near yeah. future. And what role would you want to have or how would you want to be involved? And, and maybe, and how, how do you think would be the best way to achieve that? So that it's, their vision of how to get to a place, not, you know, um, somebody, you know, it's just going off of what we've got here. Um, Brian, was it Brian who said he was good at, no, who was good at uh, fundraising? Uh, oh, uh, John. You know, he might say, I could, I could fundraise, but I'd rather have an answer that was you know the type of fundraising he might suggest or you know how, so i think if you go back to how it, how how do you envision the commission achieving whatever your your vision is um to me would be more of an interesting answer so what is your vision for the for future programs and facilities and how do you envision the commission realizing this vision? <laughs> it's a lot of initiative. <laughs> or, you know. And how uh, would, yeah. How would you suggest the commission go about achieving that? Okay, yeah. And maybe is there anything else you'd like to add about anything else, kind of? Right. Just putting it in the chat. Hey, Jared, Ed, Ed Matson wants to get on. Yeah, this I already sent him the uh, past. Oh, he's in the waiting room. I say, yep. Okay. This is look good, team. Great. So that's what we'll do. Oh, good. Good, good. Okay, great. I'll inform Julia. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is Memorial Day Parade discussion. Table it. Table it. Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything for it. And uh, I'm going to meet with Jean. And uh, man, I forget his name. Brent, there we go, who previously ran the parade. Got a little itinerary together so I can present it to you guys. But great. We got a year. So um, give me a little bit. Yeah, you said you'd speak with Jean and learn more and yep. report back. Yeah, to I, us already let it, I already looped her in. So. We're already planning on when we're going to get together. So Who ran the parade before? American the Legion. Legion. American Legion. They're ready to, um, okay. they still want to be involved, but not take the reins. So Gene had suggested or asked if we'd be interested. So I kind of went to the parade and uh, kind of just shadowed and saw what it was all about, the inner workings and I feel it's it's a perfect rec uh, rec function, but I know some commissioners had some concerns. So uh, over the next few weeks, we'll hopefully alleviate those concerns and be able to move forward. Cool. Rufus, Andy Osef ran it for 20 years. Okay. I just didn't know whether Gene had gone to, you know, opened it up to any other organizations and, and before she 
chosen park and rec or or what no i think she just felt it was it was a good fit and uh you know we kind of rock so you know i just think we're you know right This is where you guys are supposed to say, yeah, we yeah, do no, rock. Yeah, was, yes, it, it, yes, we were great. We basically said, um, you know, they need somebody to basically coordinate and manage it. Jared seems to excel at that. And the Veterans League is no longer interested in coordinating the parade. Um, if Jared was to organize and coordinate it, he'd outline very specific responsibilities and duties for each group involved. And he's really excited about it. So we all wanted to learn more and we noted that there's specific language in the bylaws about areas and sites that we're in charge of and just was there any concern there because it was a little out of our quote unquote jurisdiction. And we continue to partner with the Lions Club, the Boy Scouts and the Veterans Legion if uh, Park and Rec was to be the coordinator. And the overarching sentiment was the Memorial Day Parade is beloved by all and we would hate to see it go. Sounds good. Okay. Youth Jared, baseball and fantastic job. I just want to get that in there. <laughs> You're muted. What was that? I said you would do a fantastic job. Oh, no. thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I mean, I'm just reiterating what I said last time, but I don't, I understand that people have concerns, but I feel 1000% confident that this is something we'd be able to really nail and, and even enhance, um, you know, um, it's been done a certain way for years and there's a lot of great stuff to that. And sometimes when you bring in fresh perspectives, you can even build on it even more, which I would you know, be eager and excited to do. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. I, I know the American Legion is struggling to get newer, younger members in there, as a lot of clubs are. So um, probably time maybe for someone else to do it. Yeah, social clubs, uh, whether it's that, it's Elks, it's anything, um, because we live in a, a, a society now of constant contact with whoever we want whenever we want um they don't get the membership like they used to unfortunately you know whether it's the vfw legion military based or otherwise that's yeah, unfortunate okay so i'm going to move us on to youth baseball and softball wrap-up unless there's anything else you like to discuss about the Memorial Day Parade? No, I'm ready to move on. Um, baseball season was what I would consider very successful, especially for our first uh, venture um, <clears throat> post-COVID. So we um, we ran three age groups. The first, the youngest was the Start Smart program, which was uh, three and four-year-olds. That was a just a clinic where the children learned how to play foam bats, foam balls, um, you know, fun games, et cetera. And um, the next level was T-ball and the, the level B above that was our coach pitch. So those were the three groups and um, we had roughly 70 players. And once again, I think given what everyone has told me about registrations in the past, et cetera, that seems to be a very good number. And given the fact that we were the only um, town in region one that was able to run any of these programs. I think that's uh, a real testament to our residents and also the department. And uh, I got a lot of positive feedback. Wasn't without issues like any program is gonna have, but I think they were few and far between actually less than um, I would have imagined. You always kind of anticipate certain things going wrong and everything else, but Things went really well, and we had a great group of volunteer coaches who um, really gave a lot of time to the program. And I just want to quickly mention them by name. Um, Miranda, who you guys know, Lovato. Miranda Lovato, um, Anna Duram, Billy McCann, um, Jerry Decker, Bethany Keck, 
uh, Bailey Corso, myself, but I didn't volunteer. Um, and then we had various other parents step in and help as they could. And I uh, just want them all to know how much their volunteerism is appreciated and how they really like, I think we came back really strong with baseball and uh, you know, they, that couldn't have been possible without them. So kudos to them. And I uh, hope you guys are, you know, pretty, you know, feeling pretty good about that. And I think we're going to be able to ride that wave into soccer season. Um, so we'll start registrations for that. Once we're good with camp and we're rocking and rolling there, um, we'll start advertising for soccer. And um, I think we're going to do really well. I mean, if we had 70 for baseball, I think we can do even better for soccer because it generally commands um, a little bit more interest because it's, I love baseball, but soccer is a little more exciting when you're seven years old. Um, but yeah, really, really happy with that. And uh, what we decided to do to end the season and uh, kind of bring everybody together was run a little ice cream social, which um, we uh, had a, I know Rufus knows, a little bit of controversy, but um, we had an ice cream truck come. They did not charge people. We paid them. It was well within our budget. And um, people, the kids came, all got free ice cream. They played. We had badminton set up, frisbees, footballs, kickballs, uh, wiffle ball, uh, basketball. They were playing on the playground. It was just like two hours of fun. And um, I posted pictures on Facebook if you want to see. And it went really, really, really well. And um, I think it's going to be something we're going to continue, you know, maybe at the end of each season, do a little wrap up party. Um, we had the ASP kids came to. So kind of each season, we'll wrap it up with like, hey, end of the fall season, we'll do whatever. End of the winter season, we'll do whatever. Hey, Jared. So so it's so awesome. It's awesome. And um, what would you do differently next time? Regarding? The baseball program, like, is there? Oh, know, oh, I didn't know. You, know, you meant mentioned like certain things went yeah. wrong. I didn't know you or, meant the ice cream thing. I don't know the whole program. Um, yeah, also, what I just to it, to tie into that it, was that one of the programs we struggled a little with the registration fee, and what would did that end up working out fine? And would we do the same thing for next year? Or well, you know how I feel. Increase it. Keep going up. Yeah. Uh, what Were there I any mean? complaints about the fee, the fee or? No, no, none. I think um, we are threading a line with uh, volunteer parent coaches and the fee. So um, I'll just throw that out there. And I will say as a parent that was involved with two of the programs, my kids loved it. And I cannot say enough the importance of getting parents out there and meeting each other and building community. And that's really a huge part of these programs. And I'm so grateful that they're starting to happen. Yeah, it, um, it was really, it was awesome. It was, and um, Kate, to answer your question, what I would definitely do is start registration significantly earlier, but that was more a situational thing. Um, I felt really good about, you know, the way, you know, I work with the coaches to put the teams together. Um, we had a few issues with people like demanding to uh, have their team switched, which um, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't generally uh, tolerate that, but at the same time, I understand I'm new here and people are used to things being done a certain way. And I'm not going to come here and just tell everybody, hey, I'm Jared and I do whatever the heck I want. So I tried to be flexible, but I think next year I need to um, I need to put the kibosh on that a little bit by being a little bit more, um, a little bit more, hey, this is the policy. Here's the reason why. And uh, if you're unhappy with that, I'm sorry, um, but this is the way we need to move forward. And um, I, uh, I, I believe... You'll also, that, just not to interrupt you, but you'll also know, you'll know everybody better by that point anyway. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, other than that, I believe things went pretty well. Um, you know, we did, uh, I actually did, I don't know, I think I told you guys this, but I know obviously Abigail knows. Um, I did all the maintenance to the fields myself and it actually saved us a considerable amount of money. Um, because I remember, been, I remember that Jared, yeah. I remember that. um, and Ed helped me out Ed helped me out a couple times as well. So I got to give Ed some shout out, uh, for spraying vinegar on the weeds that would not stop growing for some reason. 
Um, but yeah, so we did all the maintenance in house. Um, and the majority of it was done by me. And then there were some volunteers who helped out as well. And um, it saved us a good deal of money actually in that budget line, which um, was good. But uh, I also, um, from what people told me, and I'm not trying to like brag, but people said I did a better job anyway. So, um, you know, we might as well roll with that. Um, but the money we saved now, um, going to have, uh, be able to buy a significant amount of clay and, um, add that to the fields. So it, it was a win-win. Um, but I felt, I felt pretty good about it. You know, um, like I said, start registration earlier, get, um, we did a tie dye party for, um, the shirts, which none of us had ever done before. And that it was just, it was a lot of chaos. I think now we've done it before. Now that we've done it, we know how to do it better. Um, but I think, yeah, really, I, I thought it went well. We just got to, there are a few things, like I said, that I experienced now and I've already learned from and just putting into play next year. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. We, Congratulations. We really sorry hmm. to miss the ice cream social. It was the event that the kids wanted to make. What was that, Abigail? We were really sorry that we weren't able to make the ice cream social the kids. You know, it was like a highlight of June for them and Aww. we couldn't make it. Probably That's cost hard. you a little ice cream, huh, Abigail? <laughs> yeah. We made ice cream cones at home. I okay. bet you did. I bet you did. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I think it was a real success. I thank everybody for the support. And uh, I'm really looking forward to soccer season. I, like I said, I'm a baseball person through and through, but there's not a sport more exciting for young children than soccer. And I think we're going to really knock it out of the park to make a baseball reference about soccer. See what I did there, Abigail? Yeah, you're brilliant. <laughs> Get this guy on stage. <laughs> Um, so are we all ready to move on to online registration contract update? And I just want to remind everybody that the last item on the agenda tonight will be the budget review. Um, yeah, I just want to let you know that it's now, I mean, July is 10 days away. And so we can officially contract with um, MyREC for online registration since we now know the budget's been approved. So um, I'll be calling them this week to get the process started. So, I mean, you guys already have made a motion to move forward with it. I just want to let you, like when the time came. So I just wanted to let you know the time has come. So. Wonderful. Yeah. And we're seeing with camp and everything else we've done, why online registration is just so needed. Um, so I can tell you guys, We've made a lot of great decisions, but this will be one of the most well-received uh, in the history of Kent Parks and Rec. History. Can't wait to not have to fill out a bunch of forms. With yeah. yeah. And all. <laughs> What's so cool about it is like, it's like Amazon for Kent Parks and Rec. Like you go on and you're like, oh, I want to add bowling or I want to add gymnastics or I want to add camp. And you can, oh, I want little Billy to do this sport, but my other child's too old for that sport. So I want him to do a different sport. And you can add it all to like one big shopping cart and then pay with a credit card. Believe it or not, you don't have to write a check anymore. Are we going to put the park passes on this? Yeah, we can put park passes on. We can do tickets to events, the, the everything. So long as we don't get surcharged for using our credit cards. The user gets you charged, surcharged. Okay. So is everybody ready to move on to the budget review? I'm ready. Okay. Yes. Would you like me to share my screen or do you want to share your screen? Um, you're better at that stuff than I am, Abigail. So you go for it. Okay. I'm just going to share my screen with the document that Jared shared with us. Can everybody see it? Yes? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So Jared, I'll let you do the walkthrough. Oh, okay. Dokey. And anybody who has questions after Jared walks through, feel free to ask. All right. So uh, income is um, 
as we've noted several times during the transition between Leslie, Miranda, Lynn, myself, um, things got very, uh, very like incorrectly coded, et cetera. So income is, um, it's skewed, um, but we, so we are not $13,000. We didn't take in $13,000 more than we budgeted. That number is incorrect, um, but just know that we're good. Um, Barbara and I have spoken about this, Barbara, our treasurer, a number of times we're all good in income. It kind of is what it is at this point. Like everybody has just accepted that this year for income for rec was a hot mess and it's just the way it is. But we did, um, you know, we did have a, um, a decent year with income. So, um, but this is not an accurate reflection because of this $24,888, a bunch of that got paid out to um, Mohawk for the ski program. So it shouldn't have actually been counted as income. It kind of goes into this like holding account. It's not income. It just kind of gets held because it never was our money to begin with. It was Mohawk's money. So it's a little bit skewed, um, but we still did meet our um, budget budget expectations for revenue. So any questions on that? All right, easy enough. Okay, regarding expenses, um, we are under budget for the director, obviously, because we didn't have one for several months. We're under budget on the hourly employees because we didn't have an ASP director for several months. Um, and then obviously health, pension, social security, that all goes along with that. So I think that really um, doesn't need any further explanation. Um, but uh, are there any questions? Okay, I didn't think so. All right, department operations, supplies. We went over budget and supplies because um, when I got here, I realized there were a lot of supplies that we needed and um, I knew we would be significantly under budget elsewhere. And um, basically with municipal budgeting, at the end of the day, the 17, negative 17,000 right there, um, that is the bottom line, literally. And that's what's most important. So I may go over budget and supplies, but I went under budget and postage. And so as long as at the end of the day, this all is zero or something negative, we're good. So I knew I was going over budget and supplies, um, but I also knew that there was no possible way we were going to spend $21,000 in park maintenance. So if you guys see what I'm saying, um, it's all a give and take. Um, but you always want to code things correctly. And the reason you always code them correctly is because next year, when we go to budget, if we have two years where we spend $800 on supplies, well, then we know that the budget for supplies should be $800. And if every year for postage, we spend, I don't know, it says zero right now, but let's say we spend a hundred. Well, then we know the budget for postage should be a hundred. Um, so going over in one line or going under in one line or another line, like that's the right way to do it. Um, because you will then be able to look back and have accurate ideas of what you spent. Um, I don't even know what notices means mileage. Um, so we're still under in that. Um, but once again, we were without a director for a while. So we're going to be under that this year. I'm not going to drive $583 worth of gas uh, in the next 10 days, but um, we'll see in the future how that plays out. Um, park maintenance, Ed, who I believe is still on the call, um, and he's been doing awesome jobs. As you can see, look, he's at Emory Park. Um, he, uh, he, um, Ed's been doing great work. He has, he'll be invoicing us soon. So this negative $20,800 $20 um, will be dropping um, by several thousand dollars. Uh, fee programs, we went over, but that also is inaccurate because of um, issues with Mohawk. So I once again worked that out with Barbara. We're all good. Um, I don't have handy my whole mathematical equation to figure out that 
the nightmare of it all. But once again, we are so far under budget that Barbara said it's really not a concern at all. Um, I don't really handle anything with telephone, uh, nor do I with electric, nor do I with water and sewer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that. Um, we have several outstanding invoices, our baseball uniforms. They messed up the invoices when they sent them to us. So I spoke to him today. He's sending them over. Like I said, Ed will be invoicing us um, as well. We have the ice cream guy invoicing us, a few outstanding invoices, but we will come in significantly under budget. Um, and I am making a few end of the year purchases for, like I said, clay for the ball fields, different, you know, park stuff. Um, but we should still be probably negative 10 grand um, there. And then the other ones are really of no consequence. So. Thank there you. Go. you. You're welcome. Any questions? Great way to come in under budget. Yeah, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> hey, Jerry, can you send that out to me? Yeah, can you access the folder or no? Or do you just want me to email it? Or you can email it b too. Yeah, no problem. All right, yeah, so that's my presentation budget-wise. Um, Any discussion? Sorry, sorry, just, just, so, just so we get ahead of any issues for next year. So whatever happened with Mohawk, I know we, I know they don't want to go into the minutia of it, but it won't be, we'll be able to not have it not be. Oh like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's no problem. So basically what happened. You don't have to, I mean, just. I'll give you the very brief. So basically yeah. we have three, three types of accounts. One is our expenses. Two is our income and three is this kind of holding account where we're taking in money for a third party and then giving that money to them. So what ended up happening was we took in thousands of dollars for Mohawk and put it into our own bank account when we shouldn't have done that. Okay. And then we went into our own expense line to then pay it out. So what that did was it made it look like we took in way more money than it did. And then it made it look like we spent way more money than we did. Okay. So okay. I already understand like where we went wrong. It was just because of the transitionary period and everything was chaotic. That was, you know, obviously before I got here and it's an easy solve. No problem. I mean, we're doing good. it with camp good, good, good. as it is. Good. Great. 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 Um, awesome guys I just realized uh, we skipped over one thing and that was probably my probably fault. my fault no no it was Camp Kent we went right to the hiring that was me and I had also wanted to just do some brief program updates um, do you guys mind if we just jump into that real quick I'm terrible at this job <laughs> no it was me I just was like yeah let's hire these people go 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 yeah, let's. Okay. So we're gonna revisit agenda item six. Yeah, the, I'll make it real quick. Six A program updates. So um, originally we had advertised the camp to be two three week sessions. Registration was thin, so we um, decided to go to the week by week model. And as a result, we've gotten a lot more registrations to the point where certain weeks are almost full, and other weeks are better than they were. Um, so. Basically, we're well on our way, I believe, to filling. I think we'll fill every session or come close to it. Um, I want to say uh, Chris has been doing an awesome job of networking and being in touch with the parents. Um, so we're, we're doing really well there. He's met with Club Getaway several times, working on the schedule with them. All of our trips are locked in, which I'm just going to outline real quick. Um, arrangements with All Star, the uh, bus company have already been uh, locked in. So we are, are rocking and rolling. And um, I know people are very excited uh, not only to be at Club Getaway, which is going to be great, but we do have a trip each week, except the first week. We don't have one the first week because we just wanted to, like, first week at Club Getaway, first week running a camp in forever. Like, let's not 
go crazy. But the second week, uh, we're doing a trip to the Trevor Zoo, which is right over the border in New York. The third week, uh, we have a trip to Newington, Connecticut, uh, Park and Rec Camp Carnival. So basically, they reached out to us and they have a carnival that comes in for a weekend uh, open to their residents. But what they did a few years ago is they started inviting the carnival to come one day earlier and they open it up only to camps around the state. And um, so they invited us to come. It's like super cheap. It was like 12 bucks a kid or something. And they get wristbands for the whole day and got to do all the rides and everything else. And they've done it for several years. So they're very experienced at how to make it run smoothly. Um, the fourth week, we're going to Powder Ridge. Fifth week, the Connecticut Science Center. And the sixth week, uh, the Maritime Aquarium in Norwalk. And um, what we are doing as well, which is kind of a cool addition, is on weeks three and week six, um, they get one day a week where the kids get a lunch um, at Club Getaway, like their cool little, like they have like the chef there do the lunch or whatever. So, um, and then the other days are just your standard, uh, standard camp days. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to note was we had discussed basically doing aftercare, um, but we decided, Chris and I talked about it for a long time and just decided that uh, it was just too much to take on. We wanted to focus on just really having a good camp and not spreading ourselves too thin. So it's gonna be awesome. I will say that the buzz at field day, because I think the announcement that there was gonna be greater flexibility um, everybody was so grateful that they could do it on a week to week basis. So yeah. Yeah, they that's were all the thing, right? so we... excited to, everybody was really excited to sign up. So I'm glad you're able to do that. Yeah. My, you know, listen, my philosophy is like, if something's not working, then we go back to the drawing board and make it work. So I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we were able to get so many more people involved in that, that at the end of the day is what we're trying to do. So. Well, yeah. seeing that flexibility from you is really encouraging like that you had a vision and it didn't quite pan out and you pivoted and tried something else improvise adapt and overcome right or go with the idea that abigail wanted me to go with all along ah. sending the waves out <laughs> not saying anything um yeah but uh we're feeling really good and um totally totally like i've never run a camp before i've let you guys know that but we've made so many good connections and we're so like partnered up with so many different people etc that i feel like we're gonna um we're gonna nail it it's great Okay, so we've covered all our agenda items. Um, if there's nothing else to be discussed. Did, um, I was just curious whether Ed, when he joined us, whether he had anything he wanted to add. I, I, I missed the public comment. Other than oh, he did public. a good job, who knows? <laughs> well, if you'd yes, like me, I just have a couple things to say. I, I, I wasn't on the meeting in the beginning because I was mowing. Um, I was just uh, wondering if the committee is going to start at some point really looking into the future of the park. And um, you should all go down there and look and see and what you would like more me to do more of. Um, and if you'd like to meet with me, with me and walk it, that's fine too. I don't, I don't mind. I walked with Jared today um, just for some ideas of what people think. And Rufus, if you would like to walk it with me someday to look yeah, around, see really. the wet spots that I showed Jared today, that would be fine. Anytime you guys want to just let me know. And even if you have a whole group, it would be nice to get a whole group to go there and walk it. Um, I should have taken before and after pictures, a lot of stuff that I did. But um, the one thing that's gotten really neat is when I was a kid, you used to be able to pull in the park and look over down into the park and see the whole park from the parking lot. And we're getting there, actually. It won't be long before you will be able to see down into the park from the parking lot. So 
it'll be a good, I think it'll be a good eye catcher for people that pull in and say, well, what's going on down there? Yeah. And they'll be able to see the whole park, which will be without removing trees, but just removing the underbrush. I think it's a good start out. And I think Jared agrees with me that. 100%. And that's yeah. it. Ed and I were talking earlier and, you know, like it's one thing if you're at a state park or a, you know, state forest or whatever else, but a municipal park, like you pull into the parking lot, you want to be able to see a park, um, generally speaking. And uh, you really couldn't do that, Emery, but Ed's really been thinning it out nicely while still obviously respecting the trees and the life. And I think it's really coming along very nicely. <clears throat> um, but I think, Ed, you, you, you nailed it, right? We need to, I think, get back to where we were a few months ago start to address the future um okay. you know because there's a lot of potential there but we need to figure out the best way to to mold that potential into something right yeah. okay. but ed thank you for all the hard work i mean if you guys go down there and see the amount of brush that's been um taken care of you'll see ed's been um it's been hacking away literally and metaphorically so thank you so much yep no thank you that's it though thanks that's awesome. We Thanks. could do our next meeting there. Yeah. The horse flies might carry you away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're back. And that's a way to keep it under an hour. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, hang on. Hang on. Hang on one second. Rufus. Yeah. Hey, um, so Rick has a on-call person for trees. Is that correct? Um, yeah. Okay, so does that apply to all departments or is that just specifically public works? Um, pretty much, you know, the public works and the roadways is that's what he, you know, if there's any problem. Um, I will ask him whether or not, you know, internal stuff like inside the park, what the deal is with that though. Yeah, because we have about eight trees that have to come down. We have a chainsaw party. Yeah, right. <laughs> that sounds like a. Yeah, Kerma, 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 you guys Kerma. are concerned about liability during a parade. Yeah, Kerma, Kerma will be all over you for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, no, I would like to no, add one thing important. about yeah. Emery. It's and it's important. Ed and I talked about this today. Um, I spoke with a contractor, and I'm not going to name drop, who did work on Emery for several years uh, during the past decade, we'll say. And um, <clears throat> he agreed, uh, and he's a local guy, et cetera. And I told him about what uh, the health department said and Kerma, and he said, having worked on the pool for as many years as he did, that he wholeheartedly agreed with their decision. And uh, hearing that from a local guy who was in there working on it, um, I just felt it needed to be shared because I know there's still a little bit of contention around it, et cetera. Um, but he said he felt that um, it really was time to um, get it engineered and that he had actually made mention of that to um, people in the past. And uh, so um I just wanted to say that again, because I still hear a little bit of, uh, you know, this, that, the other thing. And, um, you know, so now I think it's time, like, let's do it. Let's figure out what we want to do. And I mean, and, yeah, the but world we, is our oyster. Yeah. Before we do that, we need to get a, uh, a, a map of Commons Park because there isn't one. So we have one. Oh, you have it's one. really easy. Yeah. It's something you can get. We don't need to have a t anybody do a survey. If we want to just do a, quick study um oh god i have a website that uh steve pender gave me and he just we walked it and he had a topo map and i was like oh my god we've been trying to get a topo map forever and he's like oh you just go to this website so i think we've it's it's pretty tight contours i wish i had the paper um so john they're pretty easy to generate for, for us to start with um you know if we did any civil engineering we definitely need to get a real survey but i think it's it's something that we could work with to start envisioning the future. 
Yeah, I mean, it's for the, it's really basically, it, the town should take that on because it's part of their property. And it shouldn't come yeah, out. Yeah, I our, guess it's just a matter of, you know, sure, but I think we need to have a plan of what we are going to do and then make requests. You still need, but you still need a map before you can start a plan. I think we've got enough in terms of information on contours that it, you know, based on what I've heard, we don't want to hire anybody to help us do it. So like, I think we've got enough information to start looking at the contours and thinking about what we can do. Unless we want to hire somebody to work with us like an engineer or a landscape architect. And then we would they put a proposal together and they would need to have contours. And so we then have to talk about how they're gonna get that. But we don't, you know, I don't, I, I still am extremely unclear about what our plan is for, what, what we're gonna do as a commission and how we're gonna start thinking through future visions for both parks. I think we had a really productive conversation a couple months ago about the pool and uh, perhaps a pool at Kent Common. But we probably need to get a soil engineer out there to understand what's deemed wetland so then we know what we can do with that parcel. And Jared, I know you threw out some you had, you had kind of a some steps, some next steps that you were recommending. Um, None of this is on the agenda. Though, I was going to so. say, do, do we want to go down this road tonight? Or <laughs> yeah, I think we um, I think we all would love to. And Ed, you're bringing up great points, and perhaps it's no, I want to go meeting. down the road. I just meant, do we want to go down it tonight? No, I don't think we do want to go. Okay, down all tonight. right then. I no. think it's worth um a special meeting at some point to discuss it. Agreed, again. 100%. And I think- it, I think we should move forward. We've been talking about it since I've been on an alternate on the commission and it would be great. So far as I could tell, it sounds like it's been talked about for the past decade and no action has been taken. So let's be the commission that takes action. Yes. Yes. There is a stream that runs through Not the comments, tonight. which is concerning, but it is concerning. That's why I think we need to get somebody to just tell us like the limits of what we can do with that land. And Correct. I think it's a environmental I think we engineer. Are, I believe we are spinning our wheels until we have a professional here to talk to us about what we can and cannot do. I think we just and, spin our wheels. And the other thing, not to bring up the source subject, but we need to make, we need to make a decision about either locking the tennis court or not locking it. The door is just swinging open right now and you can't shut it because there's a lock on it. And All right. anyway, I know nobody really wants to talk about that, but we- Great, great agenda items. No, I, I actually do want to talk about it. I think it's a great topic of discussion. And Diane, when the next meeting is coming about, remind me and I'll put it on the agenda. Okay, I will. Okay. So I'm going to adjourn this meeting at 826 and thank you all for your time and participation.